Welcome to Cutting Edge once again. Today is going to be a good day because we are cooking mm. short rib ragu. The first documented recipe with meat sauce served on pasta dates back on the 18th century and obviously the term is French and came in Emilia Romana with Napoleon's invasion. Prior to that there were meat stews all over the Italian peninsula but never paired with pasta. Let's get cooking! We have here three kilos of beef short ribs and look how meaty they are and we are going to leave the bone in during the cook that will give a lot of flavor uh, to our dish. I have here sea salt and pepper freshly cracked, two parts salt, one part pepper and that's what we're going to season them with. So we're going to give them a coat of this. And make sure to pat it in so that it adheres to the surface. And once we are done with this on all sides, then we're going to leave them 5-10 minutes on the counter before we sear them off. Next, it's time to sear our short ribs. I have here a large cast iron pot running on medium heat, around 230 degrees. And I'm going to use a bit of avocado oil because it has a high smoke point. You don't want to use olive oil for this, that will not work very well. And then we're going to give them a good sear. And as previous times when we've been searing off, don't overcrowd the pot because then it will just start boiling instead. So do it in batches. I think I can put maybe five here. And then leave them to get a good dark brown sear. And look, this is what you want to see. Good brown crust. Then we flip them over. And don't forget the sides also. You want to give it a crust on all sides before you finish off. So be patient and give it the time it needs. They are beautiful. When the last ones are done, we're going to remove them from the pot. Like this. It smells already amazing. And look at the beautiful font we build up in the bottom of the pot here. That's going to give a lot of flavor to our dish. Now we move on with our classic sofrito. But first, let me turn down the heat to, let's say, medium low. Then I have here two finely chopped red onions. We're going to start out with them. And immediately after, I have four big carrots, also diced, relatively small. You don't want to have big chunks of uh, carrot in, uh, in the final uh, ragu. And then we have celery. That's a whole small celery with six maybe stalks, seven stalks of celery, also chopped finely. And now we're going to let that soften up and stir it so it doesn't burn. Three, four minutes, and then we're gonna create space in the middle here for our garlic. I have here two large cloves of garlic, I've chopped finely, put that there, and allow that to become fragrant. As always, 30, 40 seconds, not more, don't burn it. And then we continue with our tomato paste. I have 150 grams of tomato paste here. I'm going to add that to our pot. And we want that mixed in and then we want to let it fry a little bit to become also fragrant. To deglaze the pan, we need half a liter of full-bodied red wine. So let's put that in so we can start deglazing. Ah, the heck with it. It's Wednesday. Let's give it the whole bottle. Doesn't matter. And we are not going to cook the wine in. We are just going to let it simmer and deglaze the pan and then we continue. This is simmering nicely. Time to put our tomatoes. I have here two and a half kilo of San Marzano Pomodoro plum tomatoes and I'm going to put them in whole Somebody says you should crush them by your hand, but you don't need to do that because they will break down while cooking and leave some chunks of tomato so it doesn't become like a paste. And I like it that way. 
If you want it like a paste, you can turn this into a passata. That's all up to you. Let's bring this back to a boil. When everything is up to temperature, it's time to reintroduce our meat. Put that in. It's quite a lot. Let's see if it fits. Don't forget the juices in the bottom of the pan. This is pure flavor. You want to add that to the sauce also. Like that. That's just beautiful. Now we're going to add to the pot, and this is a good trick. I have here a couple of rinds from Parmesan that we have grated previously. Put them in the sauce and let them simmer with it until it's finished, and then we will remove them again. They will give a lot of flavor and some saltiness to our, um, to our sauce. Three bay leaves, more or less, and then I'm going to give it a good handful of thyme. I'm not taking off the leaves, I'm just adding it as is, because the leaves, they will dissolve in the sauce, and then we just remove the stems when we're finished. Let's get that in. Now it's time to cover it up. So let me get my lid here. Like that. And then we're going to put it in the oven at 160, 170 degrees. And then we're going to let it simmer for two hours before we check in on it. It's been simmering away now for two hours in the oven. So let's take it out and see how we're doing. Hmm. Oof. Wow. That smells really, really good. Tell me it's ready, please. Ah, uh, still needs. Let's steer it around a little bit. Let's check the meat here. Yeah, it has it's to almost, fell off the bone, right? Ah, uh, it's almost there. Mm -hmm. Let's just steer it around a little bit, and then you see the sauce is sort of thickening up. But what we want to do now is we're gonna put the lid back on, but with a small crack, so we can start thickening up the sauce a little bit. And then we're going to give it like that, maybe, so we have a crack. And then back in the oven for maybe, let's say, 45 minutes to an hour. Let's see how it's doing. Three hours in, and now it's time to get it out and get the bones and the silver skin and the parmesan rings out of there. Mm, and we can that smells delicious. It smells excellent and it looks really good. Now we want to take everything out. As you can see here, we have a piece of silver skin. I want to take all that off before we mix this back. I there can we have remove the this, of course, prior. You can't okay. because that's between the meat and the bones. Ah, okay. So they have to come out now. It's a little bit of... A hustle and a bustle. Nah, it I is. think it's worth it. Yeah, yeah. Well, there we have <laughs> the, the parmesan rinds there. They have given off all the flavor they have left. So now we want to get all of this out to clean it. And you see here the meat. I mean, it's like it's just falling apart completely. It's ragu, baby. It's ragu, exactly. <laughs> so we will take all these small bits and pieces out, and then we're going to shred it and put it back in the sauce to finish off our ragu. We got everything out, and as you can see, many of the bones, they fell off on their own. But to clean the rest, the easiest way is to have a pair of insulation gloves like this. And actually, I use that for all the barbecues when we're doing heavy things, because then you can lift the meat with your hands. Then we have some nitrile gloves to put on the outside, like this. And then it's so easy to clean the rest, because look, how it falls off the meat. But this inside here, that silver skin, you want to get rid of that because that is not very nice to eat. So you want to take the meat off the silver skin. There we go. Cats will be happy. Yeah, the cats <laughs> will be happy. And then we just have to clean the whole lot here and then shred the meat and how we're going to shred it, simply, it falls apart like this. It's like pulled beef. It's amazing. It's so tender. 
Well, it's a lot of work, honey. Yeah, it's <laughs> worth it, you know. Huh? Ragu is not easy. All our bones, laurel leaf and parmesan rinds, they have been removed. And we've shredded our beef here. And it looks beautiful. Now it's time to get it back in the sauce so that we can bring it back on the stove to heat it back up and taste it for salt and pepper. And also maybe we have to thicken it a little bit. We will see once we, we get it back there. And everything back. Man, that looks hey, super it's delicious. Quite thick, it's I don't think we have to thicken this no, at no, all. No. I just want to taste. I think it's very nice. Nah, I think it's perfect actually. But we will see. Let's get it back on the stove. There we go. And we started our pasta water. <laughs> yes, so we can boil some pasta. For this, we're going to use pappardelle, which is a white pasta. You don't want to use like spaghetti because this kind of thick sauce will not stick to it. So you want a, a wider type of pasta. And our beautiful ragu is back simmering and we don't need to add any thickener because it has a perfect consistency. Let me just taste it for salt and pepper. No, it's perfect. It has the right amount of salt from the salt on the meat and the parmesan, so don't need to add anything. This is ready. We just have to wait for the pasta. I look forward to taste it, right? Dive in. Thanks, baby. But the smell is magnificent. Yeah, it smells really good. Papardelle is not very easy. No, handle. but it has to be the white ones. I said that before because it's, uh, <laughs> it doesn't really stick the, uh, the pasta easy to, let's say, linguine. But... Mm -hmm. mm. I'm loving it. It's excellent. It's That's perfect. Very, very good. And it's so savory, you know, and the sofrito gives such a good taste. Not even, not just to bolognese, but to this, it's excellent. Well, I didn't expect anything less from the Italians. Give it a shot. 